All right, we're gonna do the second video for lesson 4.8. We're gonna do two proofs, and then we're gonna do some examples that require you to use some algebra in order to solve them, all right? So make sure you're ready to go. Get your paper out, take good notes. Remember, you're gonna see video quizzes on this and the previous video as well. Okay, so make sure you take good notes on both of those videos. All right, we're gonna prove right now that the base angle theorem works. Remember, the base angle theorem says if you have two congruent sides, that's our given, AB, I'm gonna go ahead and mark that, is congruent to BC. If this is true, then the angles across, so angle A, and across from this one goes to angle C, these two angles have to be congruent. We are gonna prove that this theorem actually works. All right, so here we go. Copy this down, get your statement reason column set up. If you gotta pause the video to make sure you don't get behind, make sure you do that. So, AB is congruent to BC, and that is my given. Now, we're gonna prove that we have two congruent triangles here. Some of you might right away say, well, how in the world are we gonna do that, Mr. Oates? We only got one triangle here in this picture. You're right, we do. But we have a postulate way back from earlier in the year that's gonna help me draw two congruent triangles, and it's gonna help me prove that the two triangles I draw are actually congruent. So let's think way back to earlier in the year. If I have a line, or a line segment in this case, segment AC. And I have a point, point B, that is not on this line. How many lines can I draw through this point? Remember, an infinite amount. How many of them are perpendicular to AC? Well, the answer to that, remember, was one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna put it as a dotted line for right now. I'm gonna draw that line in there, and this point, well, it's just some point, I can call it basically whatever I want. I'll just call it point P. And I know that BP has to exist perpendicular to AC. Now, we could figure out exactly where that happens using a compass or something like that, but I know it has to exist, all right? So, BP is perpendicular, that was a really bad perpendicular sign, perpendicular to AC. Why? That was called the perpendicular postulate. It told me that it has to exist, it has to happen. All right? Now, what do we know about perpendicular lines? We know that perpendicular lines form how many right angles? Four. So angle BPA, that's the one I marked already, but the one next to it, I shouldn't say congruent yet, and angle BPC are right angles. Okay, that was a theorem. It was one of those theorems without a name. And it said perpendicular lines form four right angles. Now, hopefully you're starting to see what I meant when I said we're gonna have two triangles. And since we have two triangles, I'm gonna go ahead and off to the side. Remember, I'm gonna put an S for side. Now, I haven't said anything else is congruent yet, so I can't write anything else yet, which means I need more information. So let's talk about these angles. What do we know about all right angles? Yeah, I, I know some of you just were thinking, or at least maybe even said it out loud, that they are 90 degrees. That's true, but that doesn't help me in this proof. Remember, all right angles are what to each other? They are congruent to each other. Angle BPA is congruent to angle BPC. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that up here in my picture with that other thing. I'm gonna put an A for angle off to the side. And I'm gonna put my reasons. Anyone remember that reason? Right angle congruence theorem. Okay, is one side an angle enough? Is there something that says SA you guys remember how to prove triangles are congruent? Side, 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 angle, side, all that type of stuff. We don't have one that's just SA, so we have a little more information. So let's look up here. Is there anything else in this triangle over here on the left that's congruent to this triangle over here on the right? Well, we could try to get angle A and C, but that doesn't really make sense because that's what I'm aiming for at the very end, okay? What about these two angle Bs, angle A, B, P, and C, B, P? Do I have any good reason to think they're congruent? Well, I wasn't told it was a bisector, so probably not. What about AP and PC? Once again, I wasn't told this was a bisector, so probably not. What about BP and BP? There we go. BP 
is congruent to BP. Now, why is BP congruent to BP? Why can we say that? You guys remember, it's supposed to be one of those things you absolutely have to get memorized. It's supposed to be really easy on a proof, okay? Reflexive, some of you have been saying reflective, all right, CT. Reflective is more like when light bounces off of something, okay? This is reflexive, property of congruence. That's a side, so I'm going to put S for side right over here. I'm going to put it marks up here in my picture. All right, now I have two sides and an angle. i got to check my order. Over here it looks like it's maybe side, angle, side, which we know works, but up here it's not side, angle, side. If it was side, angle, side, this would have to be the angle, side, angle, side. Angle has to be between the sides. It's not. It's side, side, angle. Okay, remember, it can't work this way. You can't skip two things in a row, can't skip an angle and a side. Side, side, angle. Side, side, angle doesn't work, does it? Remember, side, side, angle doesn't work. So, side, side, angle doesn't work unless the angle is a right angle. Hey, remember that down here? They were right angles. If it is a right angle, we rename it, you guys remember, we rename it HL. So, HL congruence, that's a theorem. All right, well, what do we have to say? We have to say the triangles are congruent. So I'm going to name the first one triangle BAP is congruent to. Now, I want you to try to name the second one. So I said BAP. You got to get the order right. What order goes with BAP? BCP. Okay. Almost done. I was trying to remember to prove the angles are congruent. So if the triangles are congruent... Angle A and angle C, they're in the same spot. The way we wrote them, they're in the middle. So they're in the same position corresponding. Angle A is congruent to angle C. Why? You guys remember what we used for that? Same position, corresponding angles. After we proved our triangles are congruent, you better get that memorized. C, P, C, T, C. That's it. We just proved that the base angle theorem works. Now, remember, theorems are shortcuts. AB is congruent to BC, go all the way through all of this work, and we finally get angle A is congruent to angle C. Now, in the future, once you know this, you can skip all of this and go straight to here, and your reason is base angle theorem. So we can take seven steps and narrow it down to just two steps. That's why we love theorems, we love shortcuts. Okay, let's do the converse. Copy the picture down. I got X, Y, Z. Angle X is congruent to angle Z. We're gonna start with the angles this time. We're gonna work up to the sides. We know we gotta work across. So Y, Z, working across here, X, Y. There we go, X, Y is congruent to Y, Z. Let's prove this works. Statements and reasons. And then we got a few algebra problems we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be all done. So, start with our givens. Angle X is congruent to angle Z, given. Now, once again, same exact thing we did on the last time. We know that there has to be some segment that comes down here from Y that ends up perpendicular to XZ. I'm going to call that point P again, wherever that happens to hit. So, YP is perpendicular to XZ because of the perpendicular postulate. Okay, we know that perpendicular lines form how many right angles again? They form four, so let's name them. So angle YPX is and angle YPZ are right angles. That's that theorem that says perpendicular lines form four right angles. And then I'm going to go ahead and say they're congruent again. You can see how this proof looks very much like the other one at the beginning. Angle YPX is congruent to angle YPZ. Right angle congruence theorem. These are all things you absolutely need to have memorized. I'm going to mark up my picture with that angle. I'm going to go ahead and off to the side. I have an angle way up here at step one. I now have one in step four. 
angle angle is not enough, remember? So if angle angle is not enough, angle 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 is not enough either, so I need some sides. So what do you think the easiest side to get to be congruent is? Don't make it hard, make it easy. Okay. How about YP congruent to YP? Okay, remember Y is YP congruent to YP. Reflexive property of congruence. That's my side. I'm going to mark it up in my picture. Let me go ahead and put two marks. All right, so what's the order? Is it angle, angle, side? Is it angle, side, angle? Those are my only possibilities. Let's look in the picture. Angle, side, angle says the side that I have marked has to be between the two angles. Well, it's definitely not between them, so it can't be angle, side, angle. It's got to be angle, angle, side. So, angle, angle, side. Postulate or theorem, what do you guys think? Remember, got to make sure you remember this. This one's a theorem. Got to name our triangles in the correct order, so I'm going to go ahead and name the first one for you, and I want you to match it. I'm going to go with XPY. It's congruent to. So XPY, got to match it. Need to go with ZPY. All right, we're almost done. I wanted XY congruent to YZ. Let's look at that. XY first and last. ZY first and last. Now here it says YZ. Does the order of a segment matter? Nope. So XY first and last congruent to YZ first and last, last and first. CPCTC and we just proved that the converse works. Once again, from now on, if you know that the angles are congruent, you can work across the triangle to the congruent sides and skip all these steps in the middle. So we're taking seven steps, and we're going to narrow it down to two steps. That's why we love theorems. All right, switch over to some algebra. Copy these two pictures down real quick, and I just want you to try to solve, excuse me, <coughs> I want you to try to solve this one. If you think you know what you're doing, go ahead and try to solve this one. And I've got two more down here we'll hit in a second, okay? So go ahead and try to solve these two real quick. Pause. If you want to just do one at a time, that's fine as well. All right, here we go. You should have already written this stuff down. So we have congruent angles. We're going to work across the triangle. So that tells me these two sides must be congruent. 6x plus 3 has to equal 4x plus 9. Subtract 4x from both sides. 2x plus 3, these cancel, equals 9. Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2. This cancels, and I get x equals 3. Now, it's always a wise thing to do to check your answer. So 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 9 is 21. It makes sense. All right, let's go over to this one. Once again, you've got to work across the triangle. So that and that have to be congruent. So that means I know this is also 3x. I didn't know that before. I wasn't sure if it was 3x or 4x or what. As I work across, I know it's a 3x. Now we've got to think back to what we learned earlier about triangles and all their angles. All three angles in a triangle must add to equal what? 3x plus that other 3x plus 4x equals 180 degrees. Like terms, 3 and 3 and 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10x equals 180 degrees. Divide by the 10 and x equals 18. Let's check our answer make sure it makes sense. 3 times 18 is 54 degrees. 3 times 18 is 54 degrees. 4 times 18 is 72 degrees. Let's add them up. 72 plus 54 is 126. 126 plus 54 is 180 degrees. We're good. Okay, let's look at the last two. This one's pretty simple, I think. Now, some people might think that x is 58 right away. If you think that, you're wrong. Okay. This one's going to be a little harder. All right, it's going to require a little more algebra 1 factoring type stuff. So go ahead and try both of these. If you get stuck on this one, come back, pay attention. All right, this one you should be able to figure out on your own. All right, here we go. So what do we got? Cross, cross. 
they got to be congruent. So this must be 58 degrees. What do we know about all three angles in a triangle? They have to add to equal 180. So x plus 58 plus 58 equals 180. A little bit of like terms, x plus 116 equals 180. Subtract the 116, these cancel, x equals 64 degrees. Okay, this one, work across, work across. x squared minus 6 has to equal 5x. Now, do you remember how to solve that type of problem? We cannot solve these by just dividing by 5 or something like that, all right? So, we have to move the 5x over here by subtracting 5x. These cancel. There are no like terms here, so we just write them in order. x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Remember, when these cancel off, I have nothing left. They're equal 0. The only way to solve these is when they equal 0. Okay? You can't solve them when they equal some other number. Now we factor, we put an x at the beginning of each. x times x is x squared. I gotta think of some numbers that multiply to give me negative six. So it could be maybe two and three, or it could be six and one. So we gotta think through that. Now, if you aren't sure, write numbers off to the side. Now I have to get a negative answer. So I have to have a negative six times a positive one, or maybe it's a negative one times a positive six. Or maybe it's a negative 2 times positive 3 or negative 3 times positive 2. This one's a little confusing because the 3 and the 2, if we add them, it can give you 5. But the 6 and the 1, if we subtract them, it can give you 5. So this one can get a little confusing. Now, because 1's positive and 1's negative, if we add these together, we would get positive 1. If we add these together, we get negative 1. Well, that's not what we're looking for right here. If I add these together, I get positive 5. Okay, it's looking a little closer, but I got the wrong sign. So therefore, it's got to be these two. Minus 6 plus 1. Okay, now, let's go ahead and let's solve these. Remember, we separate them. So x minus 6 equals 0, or maybe x plus 1 equals 0. If we add 6 to both sides, we get x equals 6, or x equals negative 1. Let's check our answers. Let's start with 6. Let's check it. 6 squared is 36. 36 minus 6 is 30. 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, that's making sense. we got 30 and 30. Let's try this negative 1. Okay, let's see what happens if we try negative 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. And 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Okay, they're equal. However, can we have negative 5 for a length? That doesn't make sense. So we have to cross this answer off. The negative length doesn't make sense. So this is our only answer. Since it's a length, I'm going to go ahead and put units in there. I didn't do that back up on this first one. You probably should have done that on x equals 3 as well. Okay? That's it. There's your algebra examples. Make sure you're ready for your video quiz. Make sure you're ready to start your homework when you get to class, and we'll see you guys in class later on.